So we took a road trip and we're gonna go get some donuts. Uh, we got told by a lot of people that uh, we need to start eating more. Mario's no problem with that. All right. Yeah, let's go do it. see two guys eating in a car click that subscribe button mmm yeah delicious keeper keeper I don't need a reason to be bigger oh look at this look at this like I got big hands right we both have very big hands True. so like I'm the stung. size of the donut is is hard to hard to quantify at home that's a big donut yeah you're bleeding all over the place you're bleeding peanut all over the place <laughs> it's raining planters in here. Knock knock. Who's there? D <laughs> yeah, is it nice to have Paula's What's that going for you? I hate you. That's why I picked the angel cream. Make a joke about it. Go ahead. I mean, it's pretty it's self explanatory. Yeah, it is. Okay. Oh, what do you got? What do you got on your card thingy? Oh, okay. Mr. Bell. Now, I had a, the only comparable guy that I could have done it with was Ladini and Tomlinson. And that's tough because, from a contract standpoint, there's no comparable there, right? Because no. Because it was so long ago that. I'm talking about from how they played. Now, the interesting thing about Tomlinson, if you look, mm -hmm. at age 26, the top line is Tomlinson's stats before he turned 26. Mm -hmm. Okay, He did that in four years. What Bell did in five. Jesus. I forgot how good Tomlinson was. Yeah. And the I'm interesting part about stat. it is that's... The, he, he has very comparable numbers to Bell in their first 63 games played. 62, 63 games played. And then afterward, he seemed to be almost as effective except for that. These are the numbers, mm -hmm. the drop-offs. Yeah. Tomlinson ended up having like 73 catches a game. Or th seven, <laughs> yeah, 73 catches a year in his before 26. After 26, he had 47. We talk about a drop-off of receptions after mm -hmm. that. All with San Diego still. This is before the Jets. Oh, was that when Schottenheimer? Was Marty Ball? Yeah, he's playing Marty Ball. I'm curious if that drop off was. Speaking of drop offs, peanuts. That's one running back in the history of the league yeah. that after 26, his stats mirrored each other. Yeah. You want to roll the dice with a guy like that? Be my guest. Well, and Bell's an interesting case because people say, well, he's old. Well, he also didn't play last season. So mm -hmm. he's got one year less of football, right? But the Steelers had no problem driving Bell into the ground. No. They had they had no problems just giving him the football, give him the football, give him the football. And it's the very new thought process in the NFL is you get a running back, you grind him to the dirt. When he wants to get paid, you don't pay him. And that's precisely what happened with the Steelers, right? They didn't they don't want to give a commitment to him. They kept wanting to go, well, we'll go one more year. Nah, you know what? We're gonna go one more year. And players don't want that. Mm -hmm. Right? So it's hard to be frustrated with the Bell situation because there is a point where you can understand it. The fan and us all say, well, you got to be there for your team. But the player goes, well, this is, no, I don't have to be. Yeah. I have the right not to show, so I'm going to not show. That's what he did. You know? And True story. It's, it's hard to, you could see both sides of the fence if you really take a step back and look at it. If you remove the fandom and you remove how much it sucks that he didn't show up and how much it did impact his team. Uh, and you look at it from what he has the right to do versus what he did. He had the right to do what he did. He's, you know, he's looking out for number one. That's it. Yeah. So uh, <clears throat> it, it's, it's challenging to be frustrated with it. However, I will say that from a patience and a vision standpoint, Le'Veon Bell is in a class of his own in the league because he is so patient. He will just wait and know that if I'm just, I, I will, I will see it and I will be gone. 
and that makes him a dangerous runner as he ages. Bell isn't dangerous because he's a speed back. Bell isn't dangerous because he's a power back. Bell's dangerous because he sees things before they're there and he exploits them. And right now it's for explosive plays, but Freddie was great at that too. Freddie was just, I'm just gonna wait, there it is, go. And even as he got older, he aged well in that department because he depended on his vision and not his, not all of his physical tools. So yeah. Bell fits in that category. Bell fits more the Freddie mold as far as vision goes to compare him to a Bills player recently. Than an, than an, than an uh, Adrian Peterson role or right. Chris right. Johnson. Right, yeah, where they depended on their physical tools. And AP's changed the way that he's played football, but he's just heavy now. Like, he just bowls people over. He doesn't yeah. care. Yeah. He doesn't care. He's playing with reckless abandon. Oh, when you talk about Bell, it's it's almost similar to the conversation you have about Brown. Mm-hmm. Does he make your team better? Instantly makes your team better. Is he? He's very patient back. However, what kind of production do you think you're going to get out of him for, for the next four years? Mm-hmm. Are you willing to sacrifice one, two, maybe three players Yeah. in that respect? Because... The contract you're going to give him and the draft picks that you have to give for compensation, or not not even draft picks, the, the contract you're going to give him will be the cost of almost like three players. Yep. Now, the influx and how um, how running backs have been coming into the league and performing well, will that hurt Bell hmm. in his plight? How replaceable he yes. is? You said there's no one that compares to him, and I agree with you, hmm. in the league. Vision, patience. Bell is in a class of his own <clears throat> with patience and vision. He really is. You can say anything you want about the player that he is and the person he is off the field. Um, but again, you have to look at from a culture fit standpoint, does does he fit? I guess the long and short of it for me is um, you don't have a great offensive line, right? You're not sure you're going to instantly be able to improve your offensive line this season. So why are you going to spend money in a, in a running back who is, you know, don't get me wrong, I love Le'Veon Bell, the player. Why would you spend money on a back like that who waits for things to open when it could just be a murder scene on the field? <laughs> right? Mm-hmm. I mean, every week, you don't have an offensive line right now. Every week could be just a complete slaughter. And you're going to go get a patient back who waits for things to open. At some point, he's going to say, to hell with that. You're just be done with it. And then you're compromising the player that you signed. Yeah. You know, that's why I think Shady covered up some of the holes in, in scheme and line the last few seasons because he would just make something out of nothing. But as you see Shady decline, and you see the level, the overall performance of the offensive line decline, you see the risks that come along with that more now than you did the, the previous seasons. So this offensive line's a mess. I'm not investing anything in a running back. I'm not. You're not drafting? No, I'll draft somebody. I, I think that's a little bit different. Investing it in a rookie because he doesn't know the difference. Sign Tevin Coleman? Oh, man, come on. I love Tevin Coleman. But again, yeah, but you can't say that then. You can't say that you're not going to invest in a running back. You're just not going to invest in Bell. I look at Tevin Coleman and Bell a little bit different, right? Because Bell is not a power back. Coleman can be. So I think Coleman could put his head down and plow through something that isn't you exactly think there. No, I don't think Bell will. Oh, okay. There's a big difference between the business decisions that Tevin Coleman's going to make and the business <laughs> decisions Le'Veon Bell's going to make. And that's a major concern for me is Bell's going to get paid, and then there's no proof saying, because the Steelers are the Steelers, right? It's hard to get a read off of them because they really do always manage what's best for the organization, not what's best for the player. So it's tough to really get a gauge on what Bell's like off the field in like an honest reporting. Um, Already put on some weight. Right, exactly. That's what we hear, right? But again, I I haven't seen him, so I, I don't I don't want to be able to say that. But the fact still remains, what if he gets paid and goes full Marcel Darius? What if he gets paid and goes, this is all I was waiting for? Start, starts wearing sailor hats everywhere? Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. What, what if he signs in Miami? When he goes to Miami. Mm-hmm. No, they don't have the they don't really have the money. They can create the money. But what if he goes to Miami? Does that tell you that he wants to win or that he wants to get paid? He wants to get paid. Right. Miami has historically been the come retire with us team. Come retire at age twenty six with us. <laughs> that's what that's what happens. Well the thing about Bell is that he, I mean we, he, the writing was on the wall already last year with 
what his attitude is as far as money versus team. Yeah. He wants to get paid. He's willing to sacrifice a lot now for even greater amount later. Well, whoever throws the biggest briefcase at him is probably going to get the biggest services. Well, and there's a major factor here, and it's his agent. Because Bell kept saying, well, I'm going to show up at the bye week. I'm going to show up here. He kept saying he was going to show up, and then he never did. But he was saying he was going to show up on social media to reporters. You know his agent was right on the phone with him afterwards like, bro, I don't think you understand what's going on here. You yeah. decided not to sign this tender. We talked about this. We're in it for the long game. You can't go. You go, you get hurt. It's over. Yeah. The reason that Bell is such a sought-after commodity is not only the player he is, he's not hurt. No. He's never hurt. Is he, though? I mean... We're starting to find out about Todd Gurley mm -hmm. in the Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. You think something could have happened to Bell at the end of the season that he never correctly fixed? Or never disclosed and said, I can't have this happen again. Yeah. I can't have this happen in week uh -huh. three. Uh -huh. It's possible. I think James Conner performing the way that he did hurt Bell. A lot. Because yeah. you can say it's scheme as to why Bell is so, so successful. And I think that's the argument here. Is Bell knows what's a good fit for him. So either he's going to get paid or he's going to try and be a Hall of Fame player. He needs to decide which that is because the team that gives him the best opportunity might not pay him the most. No. So you need to decide what you want to be. You want to be a Hall of Fame player, you go down to Tampa with Bruce Arians and you let him be I doubt you. he's going to have an epiphany and be like, listen, all right, yeah, um, I want $9 million a year. <laughs> yeah, what were you paying Peyton Barber? Yeah, just double it. We're, we're fine. <laughs> Peyton Barber made like I'll bring him to dinner a few dollars. times. Yeah, right? exactly. Yeah, I know. No, what I was going to say about his reception, I mean, in five years, he has 316 receptions. You know, he's only 20 behind Lynn Swan. Yeah. That's so stupid. A different, different era of football oh right there. Oh, my God, it's so Different dumb. era of football. But Bell was the center of that Pittsburgh defense, and Bell might have been the reason that Brown was so effective. Because you couldn't, you had to pay attention to Bell. But you know what? No, no. You don't think so? No, no, because... And it may have been, we may harken this back to the system because Connor was there, Samuels was there. It's only around 15, 15 touchdowns this year. And still had over 100 catches for 1,500 yards. Yeah. There was no Bell. So he still produced. Yeah, but Connor was filling the role of Bell just fine. I don't think people were as concerned about James Connor as they are. No, you were, you were concerned first about shutting down Brown first. Either way, no matter how you cut it, I just don't see Le'Veon Bell in Buffalo. Yeah, I don't. Could they pay him? Yeah, they could. Could the Steelers transition tag him or try a franchise tag with him? Yeah, they could. They could play games, but it doesn't matter what the Steelers do. I don't see the Bills saying, let's give uh, Le'Veon Bell. Because the, the contract that I heard, right, he'd be willing to take a two-year deal for, like, $55 million. That's crazy to me. You're going to pay him. You, you remember Case Keenum's contract? I do. Yeah. Two years, 36. Yep. Not good enough. Two it's for crazy. 40? Yeah. That's that's kind of where he wants. For 20, 27 guaranteed as we want. Mm -hmm. That's crazy. That's craziness. For the amount of money it would take to sign Bell and, and trade for Brown, you can get... Four offensive linemen. Yeah, you can redo your whole entire offensive redo line. Redo your whole line, get a and, and Tevin Coleman. Yeah. Yeah. So what would, it's not worth it. What would be your decision? Would you want Brown and Bell here with no fixes to the line? Mm -hmm. Or and you could you lose draft draft picks and yeah. and uh cap money. Right. Or do you want to put four new starters and Tevin Coleman in the backfield? I think that's the interesting argument about trading for Antonio Brown that people are making the connection with. You trade a second, let's just say that the ask price is sec, two second round picks, right? Let's say that's the that's that's what it is. Okay, fine. You're going to give up a second this year and a second next year. You're giving up a starter for the next four years, and then the next year you're going to give up another four-year starter because your second round picks are starters. Yeah. So you're going to give up five years of team control for two players 
that may not for, be uh, there for, in three. For one player who's 31. 32-33. He'll be off your team before those two players are done with their rookie deals. Yeah. Well, it's not worth it.